this is a quick uh, video because uh, I had trouble with uh, getting the one I wanted out. So we're just going to make a super quick crater out of a cereal box as the base. Now this isn't going to last forever, but we're talking, you know, cereal box is uh, free if you eat cereal. So, you know, as we're trying to make terrain that's pretty good looking, we go for super cheap, some, you know, free or easy to find things. So just cut, you know, we're going to make a big, a bigger crater because uh, little craters are, it's easier to show you on a big crater anyway. See, it's not going to sit flat because it's cheap cardboard. This is even cheaper cardboard because it's from an, the off-brand cereal. But, so there's our base. Right? So to figure this out, we're going to use pink foam to make it taller. And we want it kind of deep so that it can be uh, a very interactive piece of the terrain. So what I'm going to do is literally just cut off a chunk of this. With the specialty, very expensive foam cutter available from Wish. Or, I think Amazon probably sells them too. There's not much to it. And we're literally going to just trace the outside of it, outside edge of it. And cut that at an angle. And don't worry, you don't want it smooth. You want it all jagged and weird. And if it hangs out over the edge, that's fine. It's a crater. It's not going to be perfect. See? We're going to do the same thing to the inside to kind of show our... But we want to leave a little, like quite a bit of a base in there. You could always use a thicker foam, you could use what you could even build this all out of cardboard if you wanted to, but that's uh, more work than I want to do most of the time anyway. So you're going to want your trusty pen, because you're going to use the crap out of your pen. You could, all cut, you could cut this all out of one big piece, I'm not going to lie, but that's not what we're doing, that's not how I'm going to do it. Okay. So to make this easier, I'm just going to cut. A straighter edge along there it's not perfect it's never going to be perfect you could uh, use a table or a straight edge or whatever to get your line perfect I guess if you had a, a big one of these like a larger spread you could just zap it down <clears throat> like the rest of our base and yeah you can use just one piece and you can do whatever it doesn't really matter I'm just trying to use up some of the stuff I already you know some of the parts I already have cut out One of the uh, drawbacks of having a smaller one of these is you can only cut parts out that are so big.
Hey, hey. Yep, that's you. Okay, all these little off fall pieces, save those, we'll use them later. Okay, that should be all of that big guy we probably need. I don't know, maybe, I, I could have misspoke, who knows. fingers okay now it doesn't line up perfectly and we know we'll have to trim some stuff but that's fine this little sticky out piece here. It is nice. Gaps and all that stuff will not matter. There will be gaps. It'll be okay. Alright, so there's uh, level one. And we're going to build this up so it's deeper. So much your figures should be able to go down in it. And, you know, it's a big crater. So I'm going to glue all this down just with white glue. <clears throat> and then we'll pause and let that dry. I don't want that one. That one's the thick stuff. Oh, that's empty. It's a problem having 600 different things. White glue is one of those things where, uh, you know, it's, it's PVA glue, whatever. It's one of those things where I use it so often that I have 6,000 different bottles everywhere. One of those things where you're like at the store. Oh, I don't know. Do I need that? Yeah, I guess I do. Okay. Well, oh, I went in there with six, seven, sixteen other bottles in in the cabinet. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but you can never find it when you need it. And it doesn't need much glue. We're not talking about holding a whole lot of weight here. We're talking about using the glue is way too thick. See, just that little bit is more than enough to hold this here for a long time. This is not permanent forever terrain, but it could last decades. Okay, and see that little thing there where it sticks out and doesn't quite line up. It's going to be a booger to cover. We just change the cut so it's a little bit better now we just let this dry oh yeah so this is a video I'm making because my other video didn't work out the machine the tape got eaten by the machine because it's the 80s <clears throat> realistically the sound editor just would not kick in so it wouldn't work so we're just gonna try and make one without using that and there's nothing related at all to the other one hopefully I can get it figured out and we can do it next week Okay, here's the point I wanted to bring up. It's not going to lay flat, right? So since the glue's still wet, we're just going to put some books on there to hold it down. Because once the glue dries, it should be it, stay, it should stay relatively flat. And we'll do the same thing on the next layer. 
just to make sure it stays a little flat. And we're going to try and put our pieces over the gaps in the other, like bricks laid up to kind of hold it all together. All right, that's all I wanted to say. I'll give it uh, an hour or so to dry and come back. Okay, like literally as soon as I said I'd find those and shut the camera off, I found them. So we've got a little gap here, but that's okay, we'll fill it in later. What we're trying to do is just build up the outside of this crater. And we're just using uh, whatever bits I can find. So I don't have to cut up my other stuff much more than it already is. I don't like the idea of that. Now, you don't, like I said, you don't have to use a hot glue gun. It's just much faster to use one. In any of these areas where I like to float out, oh, you can leave them or whatever. This might be uh, like a lava flow crater or whatever you can think to turn it into. Yeah, I kind of dig the look of that too. Cut off this little nubbin. And it's got kind of a two tiered thing which will kind of blend in a little bit but not too much. And, you know, you can really, really spend your time making this look however you want. Or, you know, just, you could really spend your time doing this. Really, really good artistic with it. And we're just, I'm just showing you how to do it real quick. Uh, because, like I said, this is a makeup video, sort of. Because the one I had been working on and planned on was kind of like a lore video. And the sound just did not work at all. I kind of wound up sounding like this most of the time. It just didn't, uh, yeah. Certainly didn't, uh, work. It was like that, and then there was a lot of, like, background noise, and my editing program was just, like, being a turd. Which, you know, I guess you get what you pay for sometimes, right? You guys are getting what you paid for because I don't make any money doing this and probably never will. I kind of like the way that looks and it'll fit right in under there. So we'll just kind of go bloop. Bloop. And just cut it down to fit in there. Which I guess I'll have to cut down a lot, but whatever. Pretty good. Okay, we'll glue that one go down. Okay. So there's our uh, bit. All right. Oh, one thing I always like to do in a crater is to say that this was like an explosion. There should be like a little uprise in the middle where the bomb hit or went off. Because when an explosion happens from an explosive, it will almost act like a shield of its own from its own explosion, so it's almost always a little rise in the middle, and uh, also just kind of makes it interesting. And this is all, this is hot, so it'll burn you, if you're not careful. And we don't want it to be flat, so we're just going to glue that right in there. Yeah. I'm going to go shape the top of all this real quick with my hot wire cutter, just to get rid of any flat surfaces, and kind of make it all random. And this is one of those cases where you don't really want a steady hand, you want to be kind of shaky, so I'm really good at it. See, it gives it like a false organic. I mean, I'm going to clean up some of the other edges a little bit too. Just a little bit, just to get the obvious chunks out of it. 
Uh, you can probably pick this apart with uh, pliers. You should get needle in there and grab them, or your sprue cutters or whatever. I just uh, already have this out, so I'm gonna use this on. Oh, that's a little too straight. Okay. You do want to like avoid the chiseled rock look because you're not making rocks. You're making a, a crater. Although I guess you could just make a chiseled rock right here. Could be whatever. If my batteries are starting to die, I've only been in there for about a year. I'm just going to try to blend the edges and cut off all the excess and just make it seem less man-made, even though it is 100% all man-made, but, you know, I want to kind of seem mm, organic, like the artistic definition of organic, not random, maybe random is the term. Okay. And I just go cut until I go, okay, okay. a little bit of overhang, not a big deal. Save all these little bits, but you can use them to make rocks and stuff later on. Huh? Do that in a future uh, quick video. You know, the next time my computer screws up and I can't get things figured out. It's the fun thing about a deadline. Is it kind of forces your creativity to be working. Okay. Uh, if you're using white glue, PVA glue, you gotta let this dry. I used uh, hot glue after I put my head on my butt and uh, it don't take anywhere near that long to dry. Now here's where you gotta kind of like make the decision. Is this gonna be an old crater or a newer crater? We're gonna go to the newer crater and here's what we're gonna do for dirt. Cheap coffee. This is called Rally. It's from Dollar Tree. I don't know how to pay for it. It does not matter what coffee you use. I prefer cheap coffee because it's cheap. Okay. So, uh, if you don't like the smell of coffee, try something else. Use dirt. You can use actual dirt for dirt. It's amazing. Now, what we're going to do is take this off because it always is an issue. Yeah, we're going to get a glob of blue out. We're going to a crappy jot brush. And we're going to paint our glue where we want our big dirt, this is big dirt, uh, more rubbly than, say, just dirt, to be, which I want it to be in the cracks, in the transitions. And on the flat spots. This is just artistic, whatever you feel like it should be. There's no hard and fast rule, and you can use whatever you want for dirt. You could go buy modeling dirt, and you know, and buy whatever you want, use whatever you want, and it could be, uh, you could use sand, you can use whatever. The trick to that is, is that sand is not sand, if you use it for scale, you can't use sand for sand. If you want something sand size in scale, you need to use something like baking soda or flour, because sand at 28 millimeter scale would be so small you can't see it, so you have to suggest smaller, or you know, you have to suggest something, something bigger, you have to suggest that what you're using is smaller than it is, and there's just really no way, because sand is a good size rock at 28 millimeter. Okay, that's about half of it with the glue. So we're going to get out one of our trusty pieces of paper, and you can do the whole thing once, it doesn't matter. And we're just gonna sprinkle coffee on it. And anywhere you miss, you just go back over. Okay, see, there's like half of it with that. And uh, I just take, I need to clean the desk off. I know, I'm bad about that. It's gonna have a thousand projects going on. Half and then we just get more glue and paint the other half with that. Which I guess I'm gonna do on video. Because why not? Uh, this is the same technique you can use for basing your models if you want to base them. I think everybody should base their models, but some people don't like to or don't like the look of it. But yeah, just flat P B A, and then some cheap coffee, and you get this nice little crackly dirt look. And then uh, it'll take paint really well. And if you're gonna base your models, you should always base them before you prime, just because it will cover or it will catch all these little highlights. Here go the dogs. If you wanted to, you could really just do the whole, all of it with one thing of coffee, you just, or one size of coffee, or you know what I mean. And then we just let that dry and come back later. Okay, here we are back to do pretty much more of the same. 
gonna paint it all paint blue on. Most of the areas. Alright, and we're gonna switch it up from cheap, largely ground coffee to what is sold frequently as espresso grinds. And if you notice, it is really finely ground. It stinks horribly. Even if you like coffee, this is uh, not very coffee odorous. like that. We'll do the whole thing. Okay, now we're on to what I call the debris phase. That was, I guess, the dirt phase. So, for rocks, not boulders, mind you, rocks, we are going to use <clears throat> kitty litter. Uh, unused kitty litter. Let's just uh, throw that out there. You don't want to be using used kitty litter for this. Anywhere you think it'd look good is a good spot. And I just put big old drops of stuff down, and then I'll figure a way to, you know, I'll move them around with my brush, and I just kind of randomly wherever, and let it fall, and let gravity do what it does. Okay, that's way more glue than we'll need. Same old Junko crap jot brush from earlier. Just put it in the water so it wouldn't dry all the way out. Just move our glue around, make sure it actually sticks down. Then we'll kind of ball up in the uh, dirt we just put down, say. Yeah. Of course, can do this first. But this is the way I always do it. Okay, so you got this weird kind of pasty stuff stuck up, stuck all over. Okay. 
Just wherever you happen to have put glue, sprinkle some kitty litter on there. And as you can see, I didn't go real crazy with the kitty litter because I'm going to do uh, a grass covered thing. Okay. Knock off all your excess. I'm just going to throw this away because I'll just get more. But you can save it. Uh, I've saved lots of those for other things. Uh, weird kind of mixed in stuff. Okay. Now is when I add interesting stuff. And these are 3D printed, but you can buy them or you can make them out of wood or whatever you want to do. And I haven't cleaned them up yet. I might not clean them up very much. Yeah, it'll be alright. So I've, I just grabbed two pallets and a couple of cinder blocks. Just to make you know, for one to give it scale, but to just make it look seem a little, I don't know, more whatever. So we're just going to pick a spot to stick these. These are just like points of interest or whatever. I'll make it look, uh, I don't know. Like there was something here that got blown up, maybe. Oh, um, I try and do an odd number of center blocks. I don't know why, but for some reason it seems that your brain accepts that as more realistic and random and that's totally not random enough. Okay, you gotta go somewhere else. No, I'll just put them both there. So just a little sprinkle of this and that. And next, I'm going to add a little bit of dead grass, which uh, is made from hemp rope. So we can uh, work on how to do that sometime. I'll do a thing on how to do that, and we're just going to like pick some random spots. Uh, and you can, this is just a way to do it cheap. You could always use a, a static applicator or whatever, a shaker. This is the way we're going to do it because we're going to pretend we don't have access to all that. We're on a budget. So, the random $100 tool that your guy usually watch and you don't own, we don't use. Because let's be honest, if you're playing any of these games, you'd rather not spend more money on terrain than you would on game pieces, figures, whatever you want to call them. Okay, now if we wanted a dead, burned out, whatever, then this could be it. You just got to paint it. We're gonna, I'm gonna put some grass to it, and see, I've got some little green widgets in my stuff because I've used it before and not been really good about separating it out. That's where we are for now. We've got to let it dry for a couple hours. Cheapo black paint.
as you go along, some of your texture will come up, just stick it back down. Now, if you're going to prime this first, I would prime it in a brown. <clears throat> I actually would suggest priming it first, but we're doing this the cheapo method. Because nobody ever does the cheapo method on YouTube. Now I'll do it. Is it more expensive? Let's say you can't afford an airbrush. <clears throat> or this is your first piece of terrain or whatever I cheat because I use uh, a wire cutter but you can always just do all this with a knife <clears throat> point is there's lots of ways to do things uh, the more money you spend, usually the faster it is.
Okay, here we go. This is dried. This is the next day. Uh, and so first we need to brush off all our extra stuff. Which a lot of this uh, lighter brown, super light tan, whatever you want to call it, will come off. Even some of the kitty glitter. <clears throat> which is fine. I mean, that's why we put so much on. I'm just kind of give it a quick brush. Uh, the, some of the coffee will come off too. It's just one of those. Just want to kind of agitate up what's already real loose. <clears throat> and I just use this as an old, cheap, old paintbrush that I've used for. Uh, it's pretty. Okay, so I'm using it as a broom. Okay, so any areas that look like they might have too much or whatever, you just knock off the extra. Okay, see that looks pretty good. So we'll come through and I'm gonna use brown and I'll go over all the pink and all the other stuff. Because where the pink is is where the grass will go. And I'll probably go to, yeah, so that's next stuff. But first, set this aside and <clears throat> show the magic. Oh, there's a, I didn't use a little fix underboard. Okay, so here's how we, use, we do the magic. All the crap that you've knocked off, which is uh, coffee and all the other little bits and see there's leftover flock on my desk. <clears throat> I should use a paintbrush as a broom again. You could have a little broom, it's whatever. And just kind of sweep it all together. And as you can tell, I've not done this in a little while. I've got crap all over. But you have little bits of kitty litter <clears throat> and flock and static grass and all this kind of stuff. And what I do, and sometimes glue bits and whatnot. I usually pick out the glue bits because they don't do me much good. I just save it all, all pre-mixed, all together. And I'll go through and I'll pick out what little bits I don't think fit because usually there's a piece of foam or something there. And there you got your pretty much ready to finish piece of foam. Yeah. There's your floor covering ready mix done already and it'll be different and it's kind of whatever I guess you could have mixed it all together but that's just me being frugal uh, in other words being tight ass without sp spending too much money on stuff <clears throat> okay time to stop the video so we can fast okay so here we are I've added some bits and stuff that the camera didn't record but you know just some rocks and we're gonna just take some glue and glue on some grass uh, I'm gonna go with mostly brown because I don't, you know, want it to be bright and cheery. Let's 
trusty job paintbrush. And pretty much I want this over everywhere I painted brown because the brown does not look good. And it wasn't supposed to look good. It's supposed to be the dirt underneath grass. So if it shows through here and there, that's fine. If you were doing like a fresh crater, you wouldn't put any grass inside, but well, let's be a crater that's been there a while. You can use a static applicator, I just uh, don't have one, and uh, I don't really see much use in what I do with them, for them. And this is just static grass I got off Wish, it's super cheap. It'll be a nice good brown. And I'll do all the rest and then come back. Okay. Here we are. We got all our dead grass on there. Now we're going to add our light grass, which I just have a little bit of this color left, but that's all I should need. I'm just going to put light grass around the edges and a couple of spots on the inside to make it look more realistic.
think I need to order some more of this. But we'll just use what we got for this. It's not the only good dead color I got or dye in here has. Everything else is too vibrant. spots here and there. We'll do all the edges. Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, piece of paper. Uh, if you guys want to use a different kind of flock, that's more than except if you don't use any, that's fine too. A little bit in there just to cover up some things. go a little more highlight here and there if you want to but just spray it all with the sealer and it's done way under five bucks little crater thing it dry so all this glue will turn clear and lighten out. And that's all there is to it. Um, I, way under $5 for material. Super easy. 